Hello and welcome to your first webinar uh, for the illustration project where we are going to look at Pablo Picasso and how artists show their tell stories through images in their work. Okay, so this is this was the first work that was set during lockdown. Uh, but it's an idea we're just going to go through, first of all, introducing Pablo Picasso, who was a Spanish artist born in 1881 and died in 1973. He invented Cubism, which is a style of art that we will look at in more detail in year eight. But basically, Cubists would try to paint the world so it looked like it was moving and it was fragmented. And often it looked things looked broken and abstract. He painted lots of different subjects, uh, including people and faces. So examples of some of his work, uh, this is a really good picture just to talk about his style. It is called The Weeping Woman, and it is of a lady who is crying. Now, she does not look realistic. Uh, it is an abstract picture, and you could see that there are the eyes, there is the mouth, that is the tears running down there. And you can see that she's also holding something over her mouth, yet you can see through that. So it's this idea that Picasso had of trying to show uh, lots of different angles of the same picture at the same time. Now, what is not realistic is the colour. Uh, so the colour is very sort of bright and garish and it sort of flashes. And it, to me, it doesn't really go well with this idea of it being sort of a sad picture. Um, Likewise, this is a painting of a cat with a bird. And again, you can see the cat has not been uh, painted in a realistic way, but you can see that it's, it's body is distorted, but the cat has really thought about the patterns and the shapes that is included in his picture. Uh, this picture of uh, a woman asleep, and you can see what's interesting about this one is that the face at the same time is looking at us but also it is tilted to the side as well and often people think this represents a dream uh, so that the the dream of the lady as she is is sleeping and also this is a portrait of a man where the face is fragmented and it is and he's painted it using lots of geometric shapes with straight lines and uh, angles but these are some words I would use to describe Picasso's work. They may be strange, broken, unusual, abstract, distorted, fragmented, lively. Now, uh, the picture we are going to focus on in more detail, though, is this painting called Guernica, which is one of his most famous works. And this picture is huge. And I think in some of the videos I'm going to show you, you will get a chance to actually see it. And, and see people standing in front to get an idea of the size. It is a mural, so it, it's intended to fill a wall. And it is called Guernica, which is a town in northern Spain. Now, it was painted in 1937. And Picasso painted it after uh, a terrible event happened in Guernica. Uh, there was a war at the time in Spain. So it was a civil war where it was the Spanish people fighting amongst themselves. and uh, Spain at the time was run by a dictator called Franco, who was an ally or a friend of Germany, and he asked Hitler to help him by bombing this town of Guernica. And thousands of people were killed in the attack. And uh, it was a terrible attack, not on soldiers, but on people going about their everyday lives. And Picasso heard about this. He was Spanish, but he no longer lived in Spain. Uh, he heard about it in the news, and he painted this picture. And he selected black and white for this picture, I think, to get across sort of how somber and sad the image is, but also to think about, uh, to represent the way he saw those images uh, as they happened. Now, this painting, as I've just said, is about a bombing. Uh, uh, about a war, yet if you look closely, uh, we can't see a lot or anything which does link literally to that. So things which actually show what happened in the event. And that is because Picasso is using his imagination uh, to, to use the different animals and figures and people in this picture to, 
to tell a story, to give a message. Now, I'm going to show you a, first of all, a video of news footage of the actual event. So, it's, this is celebrating the 80th anniversary of Guernica. Okay, uh, now this next video, this is an animation that somebody has made of Guernica and it's really good to look at this because it, it, it zooms in on the different parts so you can actually sort of see what, what is actually being shown in the picture. Okay. I will stop it at certain bits and I'll just talk through uh, what what the different uh, elements of the painting are. So at the bottom here, there's a soldier, a head and arms on the floor. And here you can see there's a woman holding a child who looks like the child has died and the woman has got his head, her head back and she's screaming. Now at the back, Picasso has painted a bull. If you think about Spain, Spain, the bull is often used as a symbol of Spain. There's a bird here flying in the sky. Again, it looks in distress. And at the top of the picture is a light. Now, those zigzags and, and angles coming off for the light often looks like an explosion, I think. Here you've got somebody who is uh, holding a, a night light, so a lantern. And again, there's another lantern here. And this person looks like they're in a burning building. And then across the front of the picture, the most prominent figure in there is uh, this man or woman who are running and they look like they're unclothed as well. So again, looking very vulnerable. They're not soldiers ready to fight. He's, he's included figures who are, who are defenseless. Now in the center, this is a horse. And through the center of the horse, uh, you can see here is the handle of it. There's a spear which is actually sticking into the horse, coming out the other side, and obviously the horse is suffering. So again, it's this idea of cruelty, I think, uh, of including an animal such as a horse and it being hurt. And then finally, at the bottom, there's a hand which is clutching a sword and also a, a flower, possibly to represent defeat, possibly to represent uh, victor, uh, like lack of uh, defense and the flower maybe to represent Pete. Okay, so this final video uh, is from the BBC where it, it actually includes 
uh, other interpretations of the picture. So uh, again, people reading into what these different parts could be. Okay, so that's that's another interpretation of the painting. And from that, hopefully you get the idea of, of how images can tell a story, uh, possibly not in a very clear way, but again, you can look at the picture and you can get an idea from it. So in the next webinar, I'll go on to look at illustration and I'll talk about how uh, artists and illustrators then use images to represent the words uh, from a book.